All right, so um, I was going to show people how I went about uh, doing this extreme stress test on uh, double jointed uh, supports and then what uh, Jessica and I came up with uh, in terms of these really cool uh, I'm calling them uh, support blossoms because they remind me of a flower the way they just kind of blossom out um, and uh, it wasn't immediately obvious how to solve that how to, how to generate those so it was, it was cool uh, anyways how to do it it's easiest to kind of it's not easy to show you on a model that already has them on it but I wanted to zoom in so you get an idea of what I'm going to show you how to do because there's a couple of different ways to do this and it depends on where you need it what method is best um, so like this method that you see right here um, you'll notice this is actually like a support um, so sometimes the best way to, to generate these is actually to manually build them um, and right now I'm using a uh, one diameter, one inch diameter, and it says 0.4, but that's because Chidubox still has that bug where it just reports 0.4. But when I'm setting those in place, I set them at uh, one millimeter contact depth and one millimeter upper diameter. Uh, I only change that uh, if it sticks through, and I think it might create an island, or if it's just I, I don't like it. Like I try to I, aesthetically, I don't like it if it sticks through. Uh, that's just me. As long as it doesn't create an island, that's all that matters. But um, so, uh, but you don't always have to do it that way. Um, in fact, sometimes I mean I almost always connect something like that just because it's good physics. Um, but that's not how they always get built. So um, I will show you how to uh, build them. At least how I build built them. Uh, and then also like this structure that you see right here this was all built off the same point up here um, I started pooping them off this little spot right here and then just drug them down uh, to form this kind of lattice off this support because one of the ways that you can create those structures uh, and this is the easiest explanation it's almost harder to get them lined up but having uh, another support near like this can also be used to generate stuff like this. Uh, you put a support near the uh, model and the algorithm that decides when to generate these kinked supports will generate a kinked one for you um, and connect it to this. It's nice. Uh, but how to, how to do this? So I'm just going to remove everything because like I said, it's easier to show you how to do it on a clean model. So um, it used to be that we did not like having, you know, the model and model connections, and we're all real happy that we can now very easily clip through the model. That's great. But sometimes we don't actually want to clip through the model. We do want to come up and we want to walk along our model, which I just love that you can do now. It's actually kind of cute. So what's going on here, the first thing you need to know is there's a setting that you may or may not know about. If you come over here to bottom, you have contact point. You have one, two, and three. You should set yours to three. I don't know why, there we go, I've got three. Now three is nice. The reason that you should set it to three, even if you don't need three, is that you can delete two of them if you need to. You have to keep one, but as long as you have you know, the one, you know, great. So how does this work? So we've created our model to model. We're gonna take our tip and the thing that matters with the tip is wherever you are going to want to actually be able to change the diameter that's where you're going to put the tip because the tip diameter you can change the feet diameter you can't directly change it changes based on the distance that it goes so the tip diameter on that foot is smaller than the tip diameter on that foot just by a little bit it tapers as you go now there's a limit to which it stops tapering right now we don't have the ability to uh, to change that the variables here I thought would impact things but I've tweaked them I've set them to different values and it doesn't seem to impact what happens with these now 
sometimes they get chunky for reasons I don't fully understand either. Because um, like right now these actually look pretty thin. Uh, these are registering basically as like 0.32s if you compare them. Um, so now look, we've got this lovely little structure here. So in terms of how to support this, um, like I was telling you earlier, the other, the, the, oh, I don't know. Sometimes we like the double joint, sometimes we don't. I guess we're going to have to just use it here, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> now, you notice that I can no longer move that. The moment you move that bottom bit, I can move it. I move this, you can no longer move it. So that's just something to know. You move this way first, and then you move this around. Now, you can break it pretty easily sometimes and like right now it's not breaking on me but sometimes it'll break and do weird things so I generally move it slowly and deliberately um, so we come over here we set this to one one get it locked in now you want to check your model, make sure you give yourself enough clearance, and what's I guess one thing that is nice about the kink here is that now I can just kind of bring that back, and uh, arcs are nice because the force uh, gets translated down, and if I need to I can also uh, connect stuff in and go up and through. So that's how you create one. Now the thing is is that like for something like this, and uh, when I go to support this, I'm actually going to build off of this. Um, I'll have a whole bunch of these going. So this is actually not enough to support a whole bunch of these going up because the suction forces and such of the model plus the supports are all going to be on that joint. And this is a big chunky bit, but it's not chunky enough to hold all that's going to be on there. So um, you know, the rule of three is a good is a, is a good rule to have. Um, so I would recommend uh, just go ahead and, and setting three large supports uh, just right off the bat because um, you can build off those later I'll show you here in a second it's super super useful uh, so we'll set that to one and we'll set this to one <coughs> and check and make sure your clearance is good. It's always really important to make sure your clearance is good before you build off these things because they're movable but the software, they did not intend for somebody to do this. I, I have broken the software in a way. I think I don't, I don't think it was intended to do this. Um, I hope that they make it better to do this because this is useful. Super useful. Um, like this double jointed support, the way that's generating right there, I can't even begin to tell you how freaking useful that is. Um, I, I I would like to be able to to move my things and still move. I can understand why I can't, but in future it would be nice. All right, so we've got three things that are now locking this this little thing in place. This is not going to move. And now, this is where it just gets truly, truly beautiful. Don't forget to, you know, we've got our settings. I don't need heavies. I want. <coughs> all right, so all of these guys right here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least nine islands here. So check this out. We'll hit our. Oh, we don't want that. Give us a click, 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 click. Sometimes it'll generate one. All right, so give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me. There we go. Okay. <coughs> we now this this part is important. R bring this up higher than you actually need it. <coughs> Ooh. Now, <coughs> we bring this over to here, and guess what? That is already supported. So now, I have three legs that I can shoot up. I can drop one over here. Uh, I 
Now again, you have absolutely no control over tip diameter, tip contact depth, so you have to be very precise in your placement because um, uh, you'll get, if you, I mean it just depends on how much you care. If you wanted to remove and, and, and not leave a potential divot, you've got to match your angle pretty closely. Um, if you're not as concerned about that, if you don't mind a little tiny bit of scarring, um, then you know just place them where you want them. Doesn't really matter. Just get them on there. Um, we all right. So uh, I don't want this to be an hour video. <laughs> now <clears throat> we've got you know another one over here. Throw wherever you want. We don't have to put another thing in here. This is already all nice and done, and you can keep building off as many as you want and just go nuts. But there are other angles. Maybe I want to get stuff that's over here, and like maybe I want to get that stuff that's over there, and I don't want to clip through. So you come over here, and yeah, you've got that, but you can move that now. Bring this guy up over here. Now, you can you can put this guy here but the moment you lock those guys up there like this this is now stuck there you can't move that it it would be nice if you could but it's locked you can't move that now that one is I mean that's probably okay um, that's like two ish two to two ish two ish millimeters uh, maybe three millimeters. I think that's two millimeters, though. And so, if you don't overexpose too much, you'll be okay. But um, certain water washable resins or, or 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 softer resins might have some bonding there. Um, but you know, that's I guess that's kind of okay. You're not going to want to put too much off that though, just because again, um, if you look at this here. Like that angle is going to be not an optimal angle for, I mean, it'll work, but that's a really sharp angle. So you don't want to have a whole lot there because that's going to want to break. And you're not going to have another good way to get another support in there. I mean, you could thread one up through here. That's just not optimal. But that's okay because you can notice how as I'm moving this, that's getting smaller and smaller and you're gonna find the sweet spot because you you know you know roughly where you want it and now let's drop this up here and you notice you've got quite a bit more clearance there it's still tight but that's the nature of the beast that's what this is designed to solve normally these islands up here th this would just be an orientation that I would have to have everything back down over here and I'd be threading up through here, I'd need to have higher exposures and slower lift speeds. <coughs> it just makes it a harder print in general. Um, or I would have to use a different orientation. And in this case, I want to keep you know, as many supports off this part of the model as possible. That's why this is just such a huge game changer. The fact that I can now build off this because even though it's not ideal, I can get three good sized supports on that. Um, they'll be a long span, but because they're one millimeter, like they can deal. I mean, you can you can do a one millimeter span almost unsupported from one side of the build plate to the other. Like that's that's chunky. Um, so that's the, 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 the primary way to generate them. Another way that you can generate them that um, is a little more difficult to do but is also in my opinion cleaner. It's cleaner than this. Um, it's less flexible than this but it's, it's cleaner. So you notice over here on my cross start I have it set to 50 because I don't want to deal with them um, unless I want to. And when I want to deal with them I set it back down to 5. And what you do is, is set a support roughly where you're going to want um, to put your your bit. What well, it doesn't matter, you know. You, I mean, you can get stupidly close. It, it doesn't matter because you're going to get rid of this. This is just here to generate the supports for you. So you're going to raise it up like wonky high, <clears throat> and then you're going to generate another support off of it. Now you know the whole reason for doing this <clears throat> is to get that there and this here and what you're going to do is drag this up all the way to the top 
Now, if we were doing supports, for example, uh, we don't really need to do that down in here, but like if for some reason, let's say like this tail actually curved back, like <coughs> curved back underneath this loop, and so we didn't have this nice clean area to do this support work in, let's say this tail was in the way, you could use this same method that we're doing up here um, on the tail uh, to get this uh, support blossom uh, kernel. So I've got my uh, cross beams nice and high. It doesn't really matter where they are, just nice and high and relatively close to the top of your uh, supports. And then you're just going to do the same thing as before. You're going to move it and I, this one is less important because you're going to be using these guys uh, to, to hold your model in place. Um, but again, you do just kind of want to try and find like the maximum leg distance um, that you can get. I think this is reasonable. <coughs> now we'll go ahead and drop our tip wherever we want it. And then same thing, you know, you just kick them to wherever you want them. Or if you don't know exactly where you want them, kick them to somewhere that it's easy for you to know, like, hey, I actually don't want those there. Um, so that, you know, especially once you get like a whole bunch of the things going, you want to have a place where you know where you're placing them. You cannot place them on other supports. The legs will only attach to, to the model. The tip you can attach to whatever you want, but the legs will only attach to the model. Um, so now we've got our little our, our lip thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down and then we're going to bring this down and boom. Now this is a nice strong bond. This is better than this because this isn't actually clean. It sometimes generates um, some issues, but um, I printed through them no problems at all. It doesn't cause the supports to not uh, print, but sometimes it makes the slicer a little angry. Um, I, I just also like how this looks. Aesthetically, I try to, I mean, it might sound dumb, but like it's, it's part of the art to me too, is how the supports uh, look and function. Um, so. Uh, if you've got more than one support beam, I, I definitely recommend using it. And then, um, you know, rule of three, cut your angles. Uh, and then you can come through here and go like that. Oh, and that's just even nifty. Actually, it's not. Um, <coughs> there we go. Well, yeah, see, this is the other thing to show you. Uh, the support tip is mobile. So, um, you know, you can put it where you want it and then lift it up <coughs> and move it around and get really crazy stuff so like let's say I wanted to put now notice I've got this guy right in here and again I can just kick over and I can just kick over you know wherever I want to put them and rinse and repeat like well this is it when it generates the kinked supports the algorithm doesn't like to do things. Also, this is why I don't normally generate the uh, cross beams because the cross beams really uh, bork this strategy. Like, the you only want cross beams when you want cross beams, and so then you turn them on. Uh, there we go. See how it breaks like that? That's why when you're trying to go onto the model, you don't want a uh, kinked support. It'll work sometimes, like, but it just does weird stuff like that. Like. That's just weird and not useful, and I'm afraid that it'll make the system not stable. Um, so I don't, I don't mess with that too much. Um, don't forget to support your uh, your kernels. <laughs> if you don't support that, uh, it will fail. It will be an epic fail. Uh, it'll be glorious, and you, you know, yeah, I, 10 out of 10, don't recommend. Definitely support those, uh, and don't model to model it. Uh, I hope this helps. Uh,